the color of your crab cakes, you know, because, you know, you must take pride in that. You know, you want to make sure um, that they are GBD. You ask me, what's GBD? Golden, brown, and delicious. Hi, uh, my name is Ricky Moore. I'm the owner of Salt Box Seafood Joint located in Durham, North Carolina. This, these cooking sessions about North Carolina seafood is funded by the North Carolina Sea Grant. And today, what I'm going to do is share with you some very fundamental techniques about what it means to cook seafood so we can minimize and eliminate this level of in intimidation. In addition to that, you also want to try to celebrate our most natural resource. So today's dish, we want to start off with a recipe from out of, out of my book, Saltbox Seafood Joint Cookbook, and I call the recipe My Crab Cakes. But one thing I would say is just based on where I'm from, Eastern North Carolina, you know, a lot of people use saltine crackers. Well, I use Ritz crackers. Those are the crackers that were in my cabinet, in my household. We use that a lot of times as our breadcrumbs, if you will. So we're going to jump right into the recipe. The one thing I want to speak to is the idea of what it means to clean fresh crab meat. Now, obviously, when you buy a pound of crab meat um, during the processing, um, someone goes over it and picks through it. Um, and that's probably 85% done. But a lot of times when you get it home, you want to make sure you go through it yourself. So let me take this out. The first thing I normally do is smell it. it smells fresh cr and, and sort of like, um, you know, uh, I'm not, not going to use the term crabby, but it's like a fresh smell. You want to make sure you always verify that the crab meat is fresh. Okay, so, and also, you know, um, I like to kind of, interrupt it because it was packed really tight. So I kind of interrupt it because once I pick through it, what's going to happen is you tend to want to break it so much concerned about the shells. I don't want to break those lumps. So that's kind of I agitate it from the bottom. Okay. Kind of squeeze the container. All right. And then we're going to kind of find you a, a small sheet tray. Okay. And we're going to dump this out. I usually taste some just to verify this goodness. Or you should too. Spread out the crab meat evenly. Put it on a pile of one side of the pan. Okay, and then you want to, with your hands, because I feel like, you know, you can feel the shells a little bit better when you touch them. You organize it on one, all the other crab on one side of the pan and then slowly kind of rake it forward. And as you rake it forward, you're picking through it. And you can really find little shells. So this is the way I do it. And this will allow that the idea that I'm checking everything as I move it forward. Sometimes you're lucky and uh, you don't find too many shells. Sometimes, you know, every now and again, there's a amount, a pound or two that may have a, a lot of shells, you know, but it is, it is our personal responsibility to make sure the shells are removed. As you look at the recipe, the ingredients are minimal. You know, there's no need to overcomplicate or put any additional seasoning and that sort of thing. The goal is to allow the crab meat to be a forward flavor, very prominent. So everything else, in my mind, is like a supporting cast. All right, this brings everything together. Okay, I'm gonna go in. Gonna ensure that we get all of the crab meat off. Crab meat is super expensive, so we wanna make sure we don't waste anything, anything at all. I'm going to start adding what I call the wet ingredients or the moist ingredients. How about that? This, these are the ingredients that's just going to fortify the idea of what it means to have a moist crab cake. I'm going to add egg to one side. Now, you can do it however you like to do it. You know, this is just the way I enjoy doing it. We're going to add one-fourth cup of mayonnaise, mustard, a little Worcestershire sauce, some dashes, no real measurement, just a couple of dashes. Hot sauce, some dashes. Now, I'm gonna move this out of the way a bit because I wanna start on something else. Okay, I'm gonna start on our binder, okay? A lot of times, you know, when you talk about a binder, something that's kinda holds something in place. So in the beginning, I was talking about Ritz crackers, you know, that's. That's the household we grew up in. Everything was sort of like uh, 
this was the binder for everything. Crab cakes, fish cakes, uh, stuffing, uh, whatever we needed for um, breadcrumbs, this is what we used. Take our mallet. Pulverize these. And like I said, the goal here is that we get them to a point where they're not bulky. All right, so I'm going to set this down, and then I'm going to start to chop up some parsley. And here's another pro tip I want to share. If you want to chop parsley pretty quickly, and this pertains to curly or Italian, you want to ball it up tight, okay? You're not hurting it any, but you want to get it into a place where you can kind of shave it, okay? So we have to have a very sharp knife, and we don't want to pulverize the herbs, you know? I mean, herbs are not just for color. Every, every time I have to do a recipe, I always talk about that, like herbs are part of the flavor profile. They're, they're seasoning. You treat them the same way you treat salt and pepper. Add these herbs to my mixture here. Now, I want to talk about adding zest. Really important citrus note, um, not necessarily uh, lemon juice. I feel like the lemon juice is a bit too harsh and a good way to capture that citrusy note that one really enjoys because keep in mind, you know, the finished product, we're gonna have a fresh wedge of lemon to squeeze on it. So we don't wanna overwhelm the crab with a bunch of acid. So we just want to get the, so the note or the effervescence of, of the citrus. At this point, I'm going to add a little salt and pepper. All right, I'm going to add it over in the, in the moist section. Just want to just a little bit. Keep in mind that you have mustard that brings salt to the, to the crab cake. Just going to add just a little bit. We've got the major ingredients together. I'm going to mix this up, and then at the last... Second, I'm gonna fold in the crumbs, okay? So I'm gonna mix all this up on one side. And the reason why I does it, because now I won't break the lumps up. That's the reason behind that, okay? I know everybody wanna, wanna know why and what, what difference does it really make, but that's, that's the difference for me. And now the next steps will be me just folding things up, you know, and so I keep those lumps up there. Okay, now, Bring everything in, okay? And you use a rubber spatula and you wanna just bring it, fold everything in. I wanna bring everything together, but what I don't wanna do is overdo it. So now you see the mixture here, it's moist. You still can identify the lumps. At this point, I'm gonna add the crushed Ritz crackers. Now, if there are any irregular sized pieces that are small, the moisture from the mix is gonna kinda of soften them up. So you don't, you don't have to worry about biting into a huge piece. So now, here we go again with that folding technique. All right, and the flavor of a Ritz cracker really complements this crab. All right. See, now you notice that, you know, once we introduce the crackers, now it almost becomes like a dough and it cleans up the bowl. At this point, we're at a place where I feel a level of confidence that, you know, we have everything incorporated nicely. And we're going to set aside and we're going to start forming our cakes. Now we're going to form them up. Bring this back. So you take your standard household ice cream scoop that you already have already, you know, that little spring action there, and now we're going to form the cakes, okay? Just grab it, kind of clean off the sides, scoop it, and what you want to do is Kind of gently bring it together. Okay, no, not, not uh, to, you know, force it. Put it right on the pan. Okay. 
Okay. The one thing that I do a lot of times, I, I go from the side and form that cake, right from the side. Here's how they look, nice and uniform. This is for the crab cake maker, don't forget. All right, now we wanna check and verify the temperature, okay, of the oil. We don't want it too hot, we don't want it cold either. And this is, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call this a pan fry. All right, let me call it a pan fry instead of a saute because there's a little bit of dis more additional oil here, all right? So that isn't the difference. I wanna make sure I'm clear about that. There's, we're, what we're doing here is pan, pan frying, not deep frying, not sauteing, okay? Pan frying alludes to something that's cooked in uh, sort of semi-submerged in oil, semi-submerged, so halfway, as opposed to saute, which is just a, a whisper of oil on the pan or deep frying where it's totally covered. Keep in mind, once again, medium high heat, no higher than that. You want to, the color of your crab cakes, you know, because, you know, you must take pride in that. You know, you want to make sure um, that they are GBD. You ask me, what's GBD? Golden, brown, and delicious. So that's the measure, all right? So I'm going to make sure that we have it at a medium high heat. Okay, we already verified the temperature, so we're going to go right in. All right, from a safety standpoint, all right, very important, you know. You want to put crab cakes starting at the top. Okay. And work up front, then come from the back. Now, once you put these crab cakes in the pan, know that the temperature will drop. Okay, they're going to drop. Okay. Also, if you notice, there's a, a nice uniformity. Um, I had a, this is a 12 inch pan, and I know that this many cakes can fit on a 12 inch pan without being crowded. So, once again, I want to give you another pro tip. Once you add something to the oil, um, keep in mind that temperature of the oil will drop down. So, you adjust your fire or your heat accordingly. Okay? Now, Here's the thing, you know, keep in mind that the, look at the thickness of the crab cake, look how thick it is, okay? We want to make sure that we have the temperature at a certain point so that it browns simultaneously heating it up internally, all right? So we have a measure of between seven to eight minutes, depending upon different situations. A lot of times what I do is I brown them on all sides and I finish it in the oven so I won't have to keep it on the stove too long, and then I can really concentrate on that really golden brown look. So, thing is, you don't want to move them too much, all right? By definition, as I said before, this is a pan fry, okay? This is what's happening here. So this is not a saute or deep fry. Sort of semi, you know, just a little bit more than, and then we want to make sure, now, we start with the first cake that we put in the pan. That will let us know how everything else is going to brown. So I'm going to get in here and verify some things really quickly. And always be safe. Okay, so that was my first one. Okay, so now I know I got maybe another six seconds on each, all the other ones. Okay, and I, and I try to stay in the same order as I put them in, as I flip them over. So now, here's the idea. The idea is that now we have to drop the temperature down just a little bit and cause more internal heat to come up so that the, ca the cakes get cooked through. What we don't want is a brown outside, beautiful and delicious, then cut inside as raw or undercooked, okay? So this is kind of how, this is the standard. This is a GBD, golden brown, and then we'll verify deliciousness after we play them. <laughs> and you know what? In this case, I'm going to put these in the oven, right? I'm going to put these in the oven, okay? We have a hot oven at 350 degrees, okay? So I'm going to take these out now, all right? We're going to put them on this preparated pan here, small seat tray with a rack, all right? We'll turn our fire off. 
lift these cakes out, space them out so that And you can just smell the, and remember when I talked about the, the, soul, the, the citrus notes and, and what that, that does for the dish in terms of aroma? You can smell it right now. Beautiful. You can see what this looks like, all right? GBD, golden brown, okay, and we're going to verify the dishes. So we're going to go in the oven at 350 degrees for another four minutes. All right, so we are coming out of the oven now. And so this will allow that internal temperature to get cooked all the way through. And also we're gonna have a very uniform color. Okay, so what we're gonna do is bring this over. And what I like to do is take a little knob of butter that's at room temperature, and I need to kind of glaze mine. I don't know about you guys, but I just love to finish it with a little fresh butter right on top just to glaze it. Nothing better than crab cake, lemon, and butter. Okay. This is what we're doing here. Okay. Now, there's a nice sheen. It, it becomes a little bit more enriched. Okay, and this can be very, very impressive to your, your guests. And so, now it's time to plate. So we just want to arrange these ever so nicely on the plate. Okay, we're going to go six on the tray here. That's lovely. We're going to add some lemon. So I use a quartered lemon, all right? I make sure I get all the seeds out, okay? I'm just going to put some, some, some random lemons here and there. Okay, now we're gonna take some sprigs. Right by the lemons, right? So, mix over contrast. And I'm gonna hit some on the edge here just for balance. You know, prior to, prior to being a cook, I was gonna be an artist. So, you know, this creative nature in me kind of pops out when it's time to do uh, the plating portion of food. You know, if it looks good, it's gonna taste good. Well, it's supposed to anyway, so. Okay, here's the dish. My crab cakes, little parsley and fresh lemon.